Yes, he is doing it today manually, and but we fixed some kind of light cues, but everything is now like you see it, and but you never will see it again in this way. So a unique performance, but uh, as regards the light, I understand since Cage wants to take his distance from traditional opera, I understand that we can't expect the lighting to be focused on the singer. How will it happen then? Um, yeah, there are also instructions in the software. What we have to do is, in, in, in New York Class 3, we have to choose an active light, meaning that the light is on stage. In 4, we have indirect light. And we solved it by, you will see, I don't want to tell you any, uh, so much, but you will see how we solved the, so, uh, solved the problem of indirect light. And of course we tried to be really near by Cage, but as he worked in 1990 with a software with diskette, this, this, mm -hmm. we really, uh, we couldn't make this. <laughs> so we tried to make it in our technology, so we don't need to to change the diskette 40 times per performance, we have only one performance okay. in the computer. Of course, they couldn't know what kind of technology we now have. Yes, <laughs> but the spirit, that's the most the spirit, important. Yeah. Uh, you were mentioning now Europera 3. I understand that Europera 3 and Europera 4 are two very different works. Um, can you say roughly opera, Europera 3 is extravert and Europera 4 is introvert, or is there more to this? Yes, yes, you can say that like this. I think that um, 3 is a kind of overwhelming opera, in all cases opera at its best. And uh, you can say that, because some of the audiences ask me, uh, do you think that Cage liked opera? I think in 4 he really do like, uh -huh. does like opera, and you can see it. It's much more in, introverted. It's much more. You can you can a little bit. Uh, um, you can hear the arias. You can concentrate. You have to focus more, much more on the singers. And on three, it's just uh, crazy. It's just uh, how can you say it? It's multimedia. It's, yes. it's really a lot. But you say we can hear the arias. But how are we going to recognize the arias if the piano accompaniment is totally different? I agree. I think you know all you know the arias, but the operas you will recognize some of the arias, not of course, maybe you know all of the arias. But we tried also to get the, the most popular arias. Um, like you will see, you will hear it. Um, uh, we have and before we have. Um, a baritone singing and um, our colorato soprano singing and in, in three we have all ranges of the voices and of course they choose what they like because Cage says you can wear whatever you like and you can choose whatever aria you like and of course the young singers they didn't yeah now they didn't rehearse a new aria which they didn't know because if they ha don't have an accompany uh, they don't have piano on orchestra to help them, to support them. They have just their voices. And they're doing it without earplugs. Meaning when another singer is coming next to to singer, they have really to concentrate. And I think it's overwhelming by the singers that they can do it because I thought they might need earplugs because they are so influenced by all these sounds around them. Uh, how did they react during the rehearsals to this complex process? Yeah, we, we try to make it as as nice and comfortable as possible and we try to make the parameters more and more. They started first only the singers singing the arias in the row that Kate wanted and then we put more and more together and then the pianos came the two. Then uh, they are playing open fantasy from Liszt and also experts, excerpts from, from what Kate wanted show you a list of them and um, then they um, then we had um, uh, the rehearsals with the six uh, twelve uh, disc jockeys uh, six disc jockeys each of um, one has uh, two um, discs with player yeah it's phonographs and you're, you're talking about gramophones really so disc jockeys in the very original sense